What's up and welcome to the Sunshine State, where we keep you up to date on HBCU sports in Florida. I'm Simone Stanley, joined by our very own Florida man, Vaughn Wilson, and our big news today comes out of the MLB draft. It's still going on with 10 more rounds today, but on Tuesday we had some action. In the seventh round, the Minnesota Twins drafted Nolan Santos, a right-handed pitcher out of Bethune-Cookman, making him the first HBCU player drafted in the 2023 MLB draft. So shout out to him. And then in the 10th round, the Miami Marlins selected right-handed pitcher Xavier Meacham out of North Carolina a &T. It's exciting. You know, I think you look at the history of Bethune Cookman's baseball program. You know, we've had over 55 players get drafted, you know, to major league organizations. So this isn't anything new to our program. Uh, but you look at the adversity our program faced uh, the last two years, right? 20, we didn't play because of the pandemic. And then 2021, our administration decided to opt out of athletics. Uh, what this means to us is just the hard work that us as coaches are putting in to continue to develop our players, our student athletes that we do have. Um, it, it wasn't easy to overcome that adversity. Uh, but here we are two years later with the seventh round pick in Nolan Santos. That's a credit to him, his hard work, his dedication. Uh, he's a team first guy. It didn't matter whatever individual accolades Nolan, uh, you know, earned this year. It was all about what he could do to make our program and his teammates better around them. So that's two pitchers off the board, Vaughn, which we know is a huge accomplishment. Last year in the draft, we had two HBCU players drafted. Both One of those guys was a catcher, one was an outfielder. So it's good to see us getting representation on the mound. And so early in the draft this year. Absolutely. And then if you talk about the pitcher position, which is an elite position even in Major League Baseball, to have two pitchers, two right-hand pitchers, uh, you know, left hand are a little more scarce, but to have two right hand pitchers uh, to go from HBCUs, that is a testament to the upgraded talent that we are seeing coming out of HBCUs. And both of those guys competed in the inaugural HBCU Swingman Classic in Seattle over the weekend. So it's good to see that that national stage is working. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I talked to both coaches today, uh, Coach Johnny Hernandez, since this is the Sunshine State. I talked to both of the Sunshine State Division I coaches today, uh, Johnny Hernandez from Bethune-Cookman and Jamie Shoup from FAMU, and both of, those were, both of them were very ecstatic about the Swingman Classic and the opportunity it presented uh, for HBCU baseball players. Our travel's been great, our food's been great, the hotel was great, the gear's been great, can't complain. And what does this mean for Alabama State University? Uh, honestly, this just goes to show, you know, our coaches that work hard with us day in and day out, it shows, you know, that the work they put in it is being, being put to use. And what are you most proud of from your performance today? Uh, I'm just most proud that I got one opportunity and I took advantage of the one opportunity that I got. It's like a new lease on life being able to do something that has never been done before to give kids an opportunity of a lifetime and to be a part of it it's like a kid with his hand in the cookie jar so what can we expect from what do you what do you what kind of advice do you give the guys out here on the stage well the thing is we all said the same thing go out try to have fun and execute you never know who is watching Maybe this could be a chance for somebody to get drafted. This is what it's designed for, to give them a second chance. So hopefully we'll get some kids that will get a second look and do well by it. Um, and it was a great experience for those those guys. Um, you know, we lose two of them. We, um, Hanchi and uh, Veets will not be back with us. So we won't get to see the benefits of that event for them in our program, but we will get to see the benefits to, of that uh, for Niles, um, for Bastardo, and then, you know, of course, our center fielder, um, they, you know, he, he, he stole the show out there. Uh, he had an interview actually with Santos, um, you know, and he's just, uh, all three of them just been, will benefit greatly for, and it will affect our team. Uh, Jalen Niles, uh, I think it'll benefit him. I, I think 
he needed that more than any of the five because it was kind of validation uh, for how far he's come and how far he has yet to, to go. Vaughn, how, how awesome is that? It, it absolutely is awesome. I'm jealous that I wasn't able to go and you were out there like on triple duty. I mean, you were working for MLB Network. How, how was your experience out at the Swingman Classic? It was amazing, Vaughn. And you weren't able to be there, but the Rattlers were in full representation. <laughs> A.D. Sykes was out there. Their SID was out there as well, giving all the fam, you guys, that extra attention and exposure. But the overall stage was amazing. The crowd, Vaughn, I was not expecting that crowd on the West Coast where we know HBCU culture is scarce or scarce. I don't know why I set myself up with that word, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's very non-existent on the West Coast. And not only was the crowd right. there, but the crowd was so engaged throughout the entire game. And I was talking to one of the players about the experience, and one of the things he pointed out was the crowd. He was saying, I wasn't expecting this many people to be out here. And they were wanting autographs from the players. They were clapping. They were cheering. They were so into the game. So the biggest thing, the biggest standout to me was the participation from the crowd. Yeah, and, and also I think what was very important was that former Major League Baseball players, especially the black ones and especially the ones from HBCUs, really supported that classic. Of course, Ken Griffey was the was spark plug for the whole event. Uh, he has a passion for HBCUs and HBCU baseball. His son uh, plays football at FAMU. But to see three Rattler greats, three of, three of the greatest four uh, Rattler baseball players of all times, I'm talking about Marquise Grissom, a multiple all-star, a multiple Golden Glove uh, winner, uh, Vince Coleman, who multiple times all-star, uh, he was a dual uh, athlete at FAMU, played football on the 1978 championship team, and of course set records in Major League Baseball, uh, fighting, battling, going back and forth with Ricky Henderson for steals. I think obviously Ricky Henderson edged him out, but he led the league in steals. And then of course the Hawk, Andre Dawson. Uh, Major League Baseball Hall of Famer, they all were there. So it doesn't get, as far as for the Sunshine State, as far as for FAMU, it doesn't get any better than having those three out there supporting uh, the young baseball players coming up. And you mentioned the former players, which is important because they are the ones who laid the groundwork for the players that we're talking about today, our current HBCU baseball athletes. It's not just a time of fun, and it's not just a big stage for the current players, but the former players, Vaughn, they were having a ball. At times, it looked like they were having more <laughs> fun than the actual current athletes playing on the field. Well, I think they understood what the stage was. That stage is amazing. Major League Baseball, um, we have known there's a decline in the black players in Major League Baseball, but we can't fault Major League Baseball for not reaching out uh, making efforts like the Swingman Classic, uh, like they did in 2016 at Fenway Park to invite FAMU and North Carolina Central to play at Fenway Park. I was there. It was a first class. Uh, Nesson uh, took the broadcast on the same network that the Patriots and the Boston Red Sox and the Boston Celtics are on. They took that game. So I applaud Major League Baseball for reaching out and increasing the opportunities for HBCU and black baseball players to have that exposure. I love it. Now, continuing the theme of baseball, let's go over to the USA Baseball Collegiate National Team that has been in action this summer with a lot of HBCU representation with both players and coaches. One of those coaches is Bethune-Cookman University's Jonathan Hernandez. He's been assistant with the team, and Vaughn, that is really a big honor. It, it absolutely is, because what it does is it bodes well for the argument that HBCUs have very talented baseball coaches. Along with Hernandez, for several decades, Jamie Shute worked with uh, Team USA. So both of the Sunshine State coaches have experience there, and that is one of the highest levels of baseball uh, on the collegiate an amateur level uh, that exists. You know, I was fortunate to be able to be with the collegiate national team during training camp, uh, which is their Stars and Stripes uh, feature. 
of the top 56 um, non-draftable eligible players to cut down the roster to 26 for the friendship series that they had with Chinese Taipei and with Japan. Um, I've been doing the stuff with U Team USA since like 2011, 2012. And again, anytime that they call me to, to ask for my assistance, I'm going to do it. It doesn't matter what capacity, whether it's training camp, you know, helping with pitchers or just assisting the national team coaching staff. Um, I'm going to make sure I'm there. Sticking with Bethune Cookman because this is the Sunshine State. Earlier this year, Charles Barkley made a $1 million pledge to the university, and it turned out to be the real deal, Vaughn. He's already sent in his first $100,000 installment payment. Yes, um, and the great news is uh, Barkley made several uh, commitments to HBCUs and we're starting to see schools say, hey, we got our first payment, our, our first uh, installment of this. You know, of course, Barkley signed a historic contract uh, to continue uh, broadcasting basketball. And for a guy who once said he wasn't a role model, <laughs> he's certainly turning in to be a role model uh, by putting his money um, to good use, what Bethune Cookman and Reggie Theus, who also was an NBA player, who's familiar with Barkley and helped foster that uh, that donation for Bethune Cookman University, it was open to the school to decide what they wanted to do with it. So Reggie Theus thought that that investment needed to go to what was sorely needed for quite some time. Now, an on-campus practice facility is being turfed as we speak, it'll have lights, it'll be a beacon for that community, uh, something sorely needed at Bethune-Cookman University. We all saw the the, the, the revealing videos uh, brought on by uh, Ed Reed um, during the period where he was there. This corrects that. This will be a top-notch football practice facility, and the people in Daytona could not be more excited, but more importantly, you know, just that million dollar donation will not completely make that practice facility. Theus is doing a good job of galvanizing support for Bethune-Cookman, which was lost. The credibility for Bethune-Cookman University was lost. All those dorm deals and so many things that happened bad. But what we're seeing is we have to give kudos to uh, Theus while he's working to build a basketball program. As an athletic director, he is rebuilding the relationship with the people of Daytona. We love to hear it. And you bring up Theus and a lot of great news for Bethune-Cookman, but we have to get a little bad news for the Wildcats. This time, coming on the basketball court, once upon a time, Joe French was the leading scorer for Bethune-Cookman University. Two seasons ago, he averaged 15.8 points and was the fourth leading scorer in the SWAC. Last season, he was just the fifth leading scorer on his own team. A little fall off, a little fall off, averaging 9.8 points per game. So he hit the transfer portal, and he signed with the Arkansas Pine Bluff arrival in the swag. Mm. Vaughn, what do you got to think? What I got to say is you need to circle that game on the calendar because you know French is circled. He has it circled on his. That... <laughs> If, if and when, I don't know the schedule this year, but usually when a player transfers and gets an opportunity to play against a team that they left, they go beast mode. Um, you know, it, in, in, in all sports, you have coaches and systems that come in, and, you know, as Theus King has come in as the basketball coach slash, slash athletic director, you know, he went from being the leading scorer on bethune Cookman to the fourth or fifth. Uh, I can't remember exactly what it was. Leading scorer on his own team. That's a hard adjustment. And with the ease of transferring to try to make your situation better uh, with the transfer portal, uh, he will land in Arkansas. And we'll keep our eyes on him to see how he, uh, see how successful he is uh, at Arkansas. Now, Vaughn, we got to get back to your Rattlers. And like I said, good news, good news is gone, Vaughn. We got to all the good news for FAMU <laughs> early in the show. And it was rough for FAMU basketball last season. The unexpected departure of MJ Randolph and some other pieces really hampered that offense. But Coach McCollum has a new plan for next season, and he talked to the media about that recently, right? Absolutely. We were there for a press conference uh, uh, with Coach McCollum. And he was very candid. I, I like the fact, 
his, his his candidness was was a welcome. He said he knew in the summer that the team would not be good because the guard play was not there. Um, for the first time since he's been at FAMU, he had to deal with a uh, completely turned over roster because he had a thousand percent for like three years in a row graduation thousand uh, uh, perfect APR uh, in basketball. We know about the struggles of football particularly a family but basketball he's done a tremendous job they're batting a thousand for the last couple of years so his players come and they graduate so he found himself having to restock last season and unfortunately as he says the players just did not mix and they did not make for good competitors in the SWAC uh I knew last year was going to be a challenge yeah when when I usually give the assistant coaches, I say, hey, you, you all go over. We have, you know, the, you, you, the coaches, you, you, you do preseason rankings. And so I, same thing postseason. Put down what you think, let me look over it, you know, and then I'll, I picked us eighth, in all honesty. I, I would say if you had to just, just kind of generally describe or characterize the, the athleticism it's what really jumps jumps out at you. And you, you still have those challenges of these three or four teams are going to just going to constantly come at you with pressure, pressure, pressure. That's Southern. So you, you, you've you got that. Grambling, just physical. Backcourt, frontcourt. Same, similar with Prairie View, Texas Southern, just very, very physical. We got, so our first year here, first year we played Texas Southern, you talk about the starting semi, he played 20 minutes a game for Houston the year they went to the Final Four. I mean, that's, oh, he's 6'9", I don't know, he had to be 245, 255, somewhere in there. I mean, they, they, just, they just literally just beat you up. Vaughn, you knew this was coming, all right? Well, you didn't know this was coming, actually, because you actually had to sit down with this guy, he told you he's committed to the Rattlers. He's committed to Bragg. He's committed to FAMU. He's committed to the Sunshine State. We got to go over to football. FAMU. The transfer portal has mm -hmm. been a, hitting a lot of teams hard, but you guys recently lost first team all swag selection, Kamari Stevens. After he, he made a whole hype video, Vaughn. So he originally entered the transfer portal. Then he had some breaking news, breaking news. He had a whole production team, droves, <laughs> sat down with, with, with the head coach, Willie Simmons. I'm committed, coach. I love fam. I, it, just, it just hurt my heart to even be in the portal. He sat down with you on game day. And then he just announced he's back in the portal. Vaughn, what was your reaction? My reaction was obviously shocked. Because, as you say, I sat down with the young man. He was sitting right next to me and told me all the reasons why he felt FAMU was the place for him and the portal was not the place for him. But, you know, at the end of the day, he jumps back in the portal. And let me tell you, I feel kind of like I talked briefly with Coach Simmons yesterday. And his response was, I wish the young man well, but I have no energy to extend to that. He, he is squarely locked in on that Orange Blossom Classic at Jackson State. Everyone knows that FAMU's defensive line is deep. It was deep in the spring. Uh, a few more transfers have come in. It's truly a situation where even though he was a first-team all-swack and all-American, it's truly next man up for the Rattlers. They are they are not going to put any energy. Of course, they're going to wish him well, but they aren't going to put any energy at all into it because they're trying to be focused uh, much more focused than they were last year we know that disaster for the beginning of the year before they were able to turn things around so it was quite shocking but at this point the team the coaching staff nobody at FAMU is willing to give it much energy because at this point the roster is what it is uh, I don't know if you've seen the video of the guy that's going to replace him Gentle Hunt I mean, he's lifting the whole weight room, you know, if you see the videos of him. So uh, the team will move forward. It's it's always better to have more. And, um, and I'm not saying that you can replace 
that talent with the same skills. But I think the defense overall is still going to be very strong. So when Kamari announced that he was returning to FAMU, Coach Willie Simmons and a lot of other people from FAMU, especially FAMU Twitter as a whole, you know, they were talking a lot of trash. It's, you know, it's sports. That's what we do, Vaughn. That's what we do. They were talking a lot of trash and, you know, throwing some subliminals to other SWAC teams who have lost players in the portal and weren't able to retain them. Now, you know, karma came back and bit them, and <laughs> Jackson State fans on Twitter are calling the Orange Blossom Classic the Blue Blossom Classic and are using <laughs> Willie Simmons' last words against him. What's your reaction, Vaughn? Should, should, should FAMU fans still be excited about the Orange Blossom Classic? Listen, if they saw that spring game like we saw, I don't think they're worried about the Orange Blossom Classic. They're excited, and we want them to stay excited. You know, just going on a different tangent right now, um, there's no secret that politics in Florida uh, has gone, it's gone left really, really fast. I mean, it's, it's made a turn. I mean, our governor is attacking Disney World. Uh, the state government are, are just signing laws that are just anti-human, anti-black, uh, let's be honest, they ju they're just uh, vindictive type laws. And because there's a super majority in the uh, legislature, whatever the governor says to do, they do. And whatever they want to do, they do. And unfortunately for events like the Orange Blossom Classic, uh, there is a little concern, even though sales are on pace, uh, absolutely on pace, there is no threat to the Orange Blossom Classic at this point for those who purchase tickets this early. The concern is that, you know, in Georgia and in other places, the NAACP is warning people not to travel to Florida because of what is going on in the political realm. That's disturbing because the Orange Blossom Classic not only gives each institution nearly $450,000 above expenses, they pay the expenses, all of the expenses, pay them $450,000, put them on a national stage. This year's game will be on ESPN. Nothing behind it. The big ESPN. You know, it doesn't get any bigger than that for this game, the first game for Jackson State without Coach Prime, um, T.C. Taylor's taking over, the Rattlers looking to, you know, come in for the first time in, in, in full force, uh, no issues going on, A.D. Sykes, has already done what was being done in late August. She did it in June as far as certifying players. So that's behind FAMU, and they're trying to be squarely focused on the game. But the importance for fans to attend the game is that uh, the the um, Miami Gardens, the city of Miami Gardens, who restarted the Orange Bowl, uses that money to give scholarships to a lot of high school aspiring college students. And so we don't want that to be affected. So we're encouraging all HBCU fans, FAMU fans, Jackson State fans, football fans to come out to the Orange Blossom Classic. You got two of the best bands in, in the country. The, the Sonic Boom and the March 100, it just doesn't get any better than that. So we want to make sure that everyone understands that while those politics are going on, um, uh, that game still needs to be supported because the goal is is much bigger than the final score. And if I can, Simone, I don't want to drag this out too far, but I just want to use an example. Uh, Kwame Kilpatrick, before he got into the issues that he got into, and he was the mayor of Detroit, and uh, he was a former family player, and he came back not long after 9-11. And we were talking, and we were asking him how he was, hand how he was handling 9-11, and he said he was disappointed because he said he has meetings scheduled and all of these meetings were scheduled. And of course, government was closed for a week till they could figure out what was going on, but it opened right back up. And he said the Indian um, nation, the Hispanic nation, and I think the, the Jewish nation, they all had meetings lined up scheduled with him and as well as uh, the black nation. Well, the Jewish nation, the Hispanic nation, th those other three groups that I mentioned, they all realized 9-11 was a bad thing, but they still kept their meetings while the black contingency 
Oh, it's 9-11. We need to schedule a meeting till later. And my point is we can't lose focus as, as black folks. We are distracted very easily. So don't lose the point that the game is just FAMU and Jackson State. The game is so much bigger than that and everything in Florida. These Florida schools, Florida a &M University, Bethune-Cookman University, Florida Memorial and Edward Waters are going to need the fans from out of town to continue to travel to the events held uh, to make sure that we support the athletic departments of these great HBCUs. Woo! Woo! Bob, thank you so much. We couldn't have said it better ourselves. That is it, you guys, though, for the Sunshine State here on HBCU Game Day. Thank you guys so much for joining us.